The Department of Educational Psychology is made up of four areas, human development, learning sciences, school psychology, and then the one that I teach in, which is quantitative methods. And quantitative methods is an area that works on the design, the development, the testing, modification of statistical tools that are applicable, or at least potentially applicable, to dealing with the kind of data that come from studies of schooling. It's somewhat like engineering. Engineers will look to physics, look to chemistry for uh, insights into sort of pure theoretical issues, but they serve to sort of translate those insights from physics and chemistry into solutions for everyday problems. In a similar way, uh, faculty in the quantitative methods area look to the field of statistics, of mathematical statistics in particular, for various discoveries, various new methodologies that might in fact be most useful for uh, pr unique problems in education and the other social and behavioral sciences. I wrote a book on structural equation modeling. Uh, the first edition came out in 2000. It's an introductory book but at a relatively high level. It is not a book that's oriented toward any particular software program. Rather, it's designed to essentially take students through the process by which one builds these structural equation models, how they're tested, and then ultimately how they might be improved and used later on for developing tests of causal claims. This type of work has been the bread and butter of the field of economics for a very, very long time. So to a great extent, I think what's happening is that fields like education, and maybe to a lesser extent psychology and sociology, are trying to take these models and go beyond simply their use for description, but rather whether or not they are useful for providing information that can inform interventions or inform policy changes. One project that I'm very interested in and I spend a great deal of time on is the program on international student assessment which is referred to as PISA and PISA is the largest international student assessment that's out there right now sponsored by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development which is the OECD located in Paris. PISA is designed to assess the literacy skills both mathematical, scientific and reading literacy skills of 15-year-olds in 55 countries, 30 of which are the original OECD countries, and then there's another 25 partner countries that are involved. My work on PISA is one is a member of their technical, technical advisory group, and the other is a member of the questionnaire development expert group, and the two groups work together to be able to uh, develop and launch a very, very rigorous, uh, highly reliable, highly valid, large-scale international student assessment that's used by many countries around the globe uh, for educational policy decisions. This is the top-ranked educational psychology department in the country. We are getting the top students as well. And I'm privileged to actually have two very, very top uh, students working with me on these projects. I visited a lot of top schools when I was um, in, in the process of trying to decide where I wanted to go. The thing that really made the difference for me here was the quantitative uh, faculty are really outstanding. Um, they're world-class um, researchers and they're great people. Moving from California was difficult but I knew that I was moving to a good place because David Kaplan the first time I met him before I decided to come here, he was just so warm and inviting and I knew that I could do great things with him. I work with each student separately on their own project. I'm working with one student in one direction, another student in another direction. And I've liked that model because it gives them ownership over their own particular kind of projects. I'm working on a uh simulation study right now. Hopefully um, educators can take the results of this and use our results which will hopefully lead to be, uh, more accuracy in, the, in their procedures. The work we're starting with the growth mixture model we want to try to see if small sample sizes small classes can actually be detected in certain estimation methods 
and that could be potentially useful for, say, a psychologist who has small uh, classes of individuals that they want to um, assess over time. We all work on stuff that's slightly different from each other, but um, we know enough about each other's research that we can really bounce ideas off of one another, and that has proved to be a very important component of success in this program. I like uh, the interaction with people that are really very smart, and uh, that includes the students. I feel like he respects my opinions just as much as I respect his with the research we work on together. He's allowed us to be very involved in the high level of research that he engages in. A really amazing feature of this university is its orientation toward collaboration. And it's not forced collaboration, it's a very naturally occurring collaboration. We're building down the street this Wisconsin Institutes for Discovery in order to create a building, not to force people to collaborate, but to create an architectural structure whereby people will naturally collaborate. I think for a student coming here, this would be a, a, an amazing experience in just terms of the, the amount of just interesting research that's going on, not just in our department and not just our school, but across the campus as a whole. rich amount of thought wandering around in our building is just uh, sort of humbling. I'm enjoying the work that I'm doing with David. Um, I'm happy that I have the opportunity to work with him and he has really taken me in and given me opportunities that I probably wouldn't have had other places.